No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm in here to learn more about somebody who has entered my orbit, who's making moves within the No Jumper universe. Had a David Russell clip or two running up numbers. He's back on a fig with it. Smack. You heard of me? He's in, in the, the building. building. <laughs> man, yo, cap. No cap, man. It's an honor and a pleasure to be in the building with you. Hey, man. One thing I always say about Podden is that, you know, I learned this lesson with Crip Mac mm-hmm. one way or another, is that it don't matter if somebody sold a million records or if somebody, you know, has been in a movie or whatever the fuck it is. It's like there's a lot of different ways to be famous in this day and age. Facts. And right. there's a lot of... There's a lot of people who have amazing stories to tell and an amazing way to tell their stories that might not ne- necessarily have a traditional upbringing. But that's what I always wanted to do. I always wanted to tell interesting stories. So I'm glad we get to delve into this one. Let's do it. I'm open like a book. Let's yeah. go. Because you're you're a real you're a real guy. Yes. I you're am. putting the real version of yourself out there for yeah, the people. I, I mess up. I might say a word wrong. I'm just being me, and that's all I know how to be is me. Either they're gonna like me or you're not. You Take might wild out on a bitch. For you sure. might tell you got a Bentley out in the parking lot. Yeah, I might tell I got a double R Bentley, a right. six story house, <laughs> or a big backyard. You know what I mean? Right. But I'm really going to a two bedroom house. You know what I mean? Right. But yeah, I'm gonna sell my story and make it sound good. That's part of what makes smack smack. That part. All right, let's start from the beginning. Let's go. Vlad style. This is your first time here, so uh, let's start from the beginning. Let's do it. I heard Vlad say that about eighteen hundred times. I <laughs> shout out Vlad, man. Shout out Vlad. What was your childhood like? Take me to the the earliest days. Oh, the earliest days. I'm gonna take you all the way back to I'm say 13 when I joined a little clique called Flirts. Man, me and my crew. Man, it was like 51st Street Flirts, but we all was like dudes that dress fly. We don't gang bang or nothing. There was other cliques, but we just fly. We got the S curl kits, the whole nine yards. And flirt sounded mad hard at the time because to I'm gonna be real with you, flirt. Like I, I've never like wanted to describe myself as a flirt throughout my life, but when you when you say it like that, I can kind of feel. That part, like there's we, a bunch of shit like that in gang banging where it, w- it wouldn't sound hard if it wasn't a gang thing, but right. it's a gang thing, so it sounds hard. Yeah, we came in peace. We came in <laughs> peace. You hear me? We just wanted to knock you off of your girl or something. You hear me? <laughs> Be like flirt. Me? That's what we used to do. Walk around John here, flirt. So this wasn't a blood or a crypt thing. This is no. just a straight little crew. Straight crew. We was all born on 51st Street. All grew up. Our mamas grew up with each other. We all like grew up in the same community. Yeah. And so this wasn't a terribly violent thing. Thing at that nah. time, though, we was fighting other cliques like Three P Hustlers and uh, Five Star Panics. You hear know I me? Mean? Uh, PSTs, but it wasn't nothing but just a fight. Cause you gotta remember, I'm an '80s baby. I'll be 35 in nine days. Okay, so, so you seen game banging before it became straight up bloodshed every time there was an altercation? For sure. Like it, this new era is crazy. The game stay the same, but the players in the game change. Mm. Just there's like different penalties expected for shit these days. Not even different penalties because it's like these days they don't respect the, the the culture. They don't respect nothing. They think they oh, know more than me and know more. Like, I've been here before you. I know your mama. I know your daddy. So yeah. you expected that by the time you got to this point in your life that the younger generation of street kids, rap kids, et cetera, would have they, – they, they, would, they would have some more respect that they would care. Yeah. Because like, you felt that way towards – my older 35 year olds, 40 year olds, when you were a kid. Up to them, like, yeah, because they ain't going to tell me nothing wrong. You feel me? Mm. I'm listening now. These youngsters these days, this, these 2000 and something babies, oh, they feel like, oh, yeah, I got the bag. Yeah, I read. I went through a few windows. You can't tell me nothing. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> well, good luck. Nigga, don't crash and burn. You know what I mean? But right. I paid attention and listened. That's how I got to where I'm is now. You feel me? Really? Yeah. So you wanted to earn the respect of the OGs in your area when you were young? Yeah, for sure I did, because I looked up to them. That was my daddy. I never had a daddy in my life. My daddy never claimed me. Really? So, yeah, like, all my brothers and them, they was turning to sports and stuff. I never was good in sports. So all I knew was, if I go out here, they going to smoke a few blunts. I'm going to hear some exclusive stories here to me. Mm-hmm. And that's what drew me out there, you feel me? Yeah. So it wasn't like... Some people say they're like get drawn to the gang shit because they got revenge on their mind or whatever. You nah, just was no, on some more chill shit. No, nah, because we family oriented. It wasn't none of that. And when you talk about that crew era, though, are you even thinking about that shit in comparison to the gang shit? Because I feel like all that shit has to like funnel into gang shit at some I, point, I right? I feel like that's what starts you to bend in the gang. You feel mm-hmm. me? 
Yeah, I feel like that. Yeah. Yeah, because even like you could think of a bunch of rap crews that were pretty much crews, and then at some point they turn into a gang. The line becomes blurry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Facts. Facts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. How do how do you sort of age out of that? How do you how do you end up getting put on the set? How are we gonna fast forward to that? Yeah, we could go. Oh uh, shit! Basically, like when we got in middle school. It, the fighting got to fighting, but it was even more worse than fighting. And then the older homies like, bro, y'all need to uh, might as well get put on. Y'all in the hood thugging, y'all fighting, beating up stuff. We like, bro, we hear you. We ain't doing none of that. Like the, these people that's telling us know our mamas. They grew up with our mamas. You feel? We like, mm -hmm. nigga, Shane, we ain't doing that. Like we flirt. But then that's so you thought game bang was lame, or you thought you were gonna be able to avoid it? No, nah, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to avoid it. Like mm -hmm. I knew that was my next step. I just wanted to figure this out and make sure I got the fighting skills. You hear know I me? Mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I already knew where I was headed. Like with this shit, because the streets would show me love. I didn't have a daddy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I knew that. So once that started happening and the shooting started happening, that's when it was like, okay, it's real now because they shooting at us and we don't gang bang. Right. Like, we dodging bullets, and we don't gangbang. And these is grown men. So we but like, you getting shot at by who? By people that just hate that, the area that yeah, you're in? Yeah, that hate that area. So now, think about you got middle school kids. Some of us is my size. Some of them is bigger than me. But we in the middle school, though. And you got a grown nigga pulling up. So I'm fuck with you, boo. Bow, bow, bow. We like shit. And you don't even know what he's talking about? You don't even... I know what he's talking about because I'm here. But, but it ain't really your shit. But I ain't shit. thinking it, it's coming to me, though. Like, you looking at the wrong nigga. You need to go hit some old blocks. We ain't the ones you looking for. You feel right. me? And he's like, fuck it. Boom, boom. That's why I'm like, I'm tired. I'm ready to come home. <laughs> right. And that's how my shit got started. Damn. But, okay, so once you get put on, though, how's your life change? Dramatically. I, after I got put on, I was shot nine times. I got shot the first time six times. I was in a coma for two months. What age was that at? 17, fresh out of camp, Camp Coral Heart. Camp so you, Coral you get put away for how long? Seven to eight, nine months I end up doing. For what? Strong arm robbery. Okay. Yeah. How'd that go down? What were you doing? Been wild, walked to the corner, tried to take some Hispanics bikes and. Just and a random he, dude taking yeah, damn near they, nothing yeah, they, off them? Like, they had bikes, though. They had the cleanest ones. Oh, okay. The blue seas. They had the little rings around. I don't know they had the decked out bikes. So we like, shit, we broke, nigga. Let's take this and we go sell this real quick. Boy, the boys will let go the bikes. I'm talking about they gave us a squabble out this world, bit one of my boys on their chest. I'm talking about they wasn't letting us take these bikes. I thought it was going to be a simple boop, boop, boop. We out here. They like, no, nah, we want our bikes. They, <laughs> they squabbled us down for You got to stand on your bike, right? For sure. They squabbled us down. Police pulled up while it was going on. So you pulled the gun out, and they still didn't want to give the bike they up? They didn't want the bike. See, they I, wasn't playing. They, them bikes was worth some money back then. When I was growing up, you have a lowrider bike? That yeah. mean your mama got chilly. I mean, I had a, a a bike my whole life, and it was the most important thing to me. Never got my bike stolen one time. But if somebody ever pointed a gun at me and said, give me your bike, I would say, here you go. Thank you. I already did the same thing. Take <laughs> it. Like, but they wasn't letting them bikes go. Free bike. Here you go. They was not letting them bikes go. I swear to God. When I was in high school, a couple of times somebody come up with me and say, I'll fight you for your bike. And I'm, I would try I'm to tell them straight out. You, I'm not going to fight you for my bike because if I lose, you still not taking my motherfucking bike. Yeah. So you might want to do what you go do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was kind of my sentiment as well. It's like, nah, like, if you want to try to take my bike, I guess I'm going to have to fight you, but I'm not going to fight you for or my, my bike. bike. That's the wrong order right, of operations. Right. Like, <laughs> fight, you want to fight me? You stupid? Okay. <laughs> that is not the me? order, bro. Nah. You take my shit and then I got to fight you. Yeah, that's out. I don't fight you to decide the ownership. The ownership has already been decided. And then that's what's crazy because it go back to when I was saying the click shit. Yeah. My homies, they felt like they had to watch me because out of all them, like, they was a year older than me, two years, you feel me? So I was the youngest dude in the crew, you mm -hmm. feel me? So they felt like they had to watch me. So couldn't nobody say they want to fight me. So when they say they want to fight me, just believe 10 more people want to fight you after me. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up crazy. Right. Like, they want nobody letting nobody touch me. Nah. But were you always, did you always know that you were going to have to overreact? That you couldn't just be passive and just be on some chill shit? You really had to prove yourself? Yeah, of course. Because growing up in the Fifth Ward, that's what we call the 50s, the Fifth Ward. It's crazy. You you grow up with your grandpa's grannies on dope. And so it's like you've been seeing shit, you feel me, that you ain't supposed to see. That a kid don't even supposed to see. Mm. Like, for real, I didn't see my Uncle Brady rest in peace on the side of the house, and all you keep seeing is this. Like, I never wanted to see that shit, but I seen it, though. You feel me? So I knew 
a lot of stuff o over my time like that. I was way over advanced in my time, basically, for sure. Mm. And once I got shot, that was really just blew it out the water. It was over with. Right. So you just got shot in some ram shit. You were standing in front of your house or something, you said? Look, look, this is a real story, no cap. I was at a girl house on 55th and Broadway. Shout out Alexis. She loved me to this day. I'm at Alexis' house. Back in the days, you, you had the 730s, the chirps. Boop, boop. Uh huh. It was that era. I had a 730. I left it at her house when my mama came to get me. So when she picked me up, she said, son, she threw the car and park in the driveway. She said, God telling me somebody want to hurt you. You know me, I'm young, 17. I don't want to hear that shit, mama. You tripping, man. You on that church shit. She like, son, she broke down crying. Somebody's going to hurt you. Stay in the house. I'm like, I'll stay in the house. I go for my phone. I'm like, damn, my phone ain't here. She like, I'm going to take you to go get it. She took me, get my phone. We jump out. She's still lecturing me like, if you leave this house, something's going to happen. I said, all right. I go in the house. My chirp go off. Boop, boop, boop. I walk out the door, hit a few corners, and next thing you know, it was over with. I was six shots in me, and... It, it was over. And so this is 100% just because of the air you were in? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, six shots. And look how cold the game is. Now I run to a lady yard because she had a balcony in front of her yard. I hit the gate. Help, help, help. Why would she come down? This lady stayed right across the street from me. Right. I grew up with my mama and all them. I know her. She know me. Just because she didn't want you bleeding all over the crib? or <laughs> Nah, I, I went on a porch. And when I fell on the porch, that was it. I can't move no more. I'm my. I got the same line right here. I got going down right here. The same hospital line got going right here. That's crazy. You got that, but it's like old as fuck. Yeah. Because a lot of you see people with like it's it's relatively one. new. You had it yeah. forever. Yeah. This you can forever. barely see it now. Yeah, for sure. That's Facts. crazy. So when she seen me, she like, oh my god, this Cassandra's son. Ooh. So her husband told the uh, wife go around there and get to my mama. She wasn't at home though. It was on a Friday. Mm. He like, wasn't nobody there, so he left a note and left it on the door, and my mama called him, and she called him, like, yeah, uh, you left a note on my door tomorrow, Kevin? They like, yes, he just got shot 20 minutes ago. The ambulance taking him to the thing. She like, where y'all at? She, they told her the street. She went over there. They are like, no. She was like, my brain was gone. All I knew was, where at? Where you get shot at? So she flew over there, seeing it was taped off. She went to the hospital, and she said it. It was curtains. I was in a coma for two months. Wow. Doctors so, told her, pull it. She said, nah, because. They I, told her to give up yeah, on it. Yeah, they like, just pull the plug, because I was on there for a month. Now they like, hey, he's going to be brain dead. He's not going to know nothing. You got to feed him again. She's like, okay. And yeah. is she like racking up bills at the same time when yeah, you're in there, too? Yeah, she's racking up bills. You got to think about it. She worked at a, uh, yeah. a, 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 not a high school. What's up under the high school? That's it's got to be th up. thousands of dollars a day, right? Thousands, and she only worked in the cafeteria. Think about that. Oh yeah, she's a cafeteria lady serving the food. Yeah, yeah. Every day that you're in there might be a week or two of work for her. Think about it. Now, and I was on Medicare back then, so she like, we gonna run this motherfucker up. Oh. And once that get through getting ran up, we got some chili. Her daddy, my grandpa, he was working at Boeing at the time for like forty years. So he like, he's stupid, loser who fade up with two, three houses. He like, oh shit, we got you. So she said, the only reason why I didn't do it because. <laughs> I would have felt bad if you would have died knowing that if I didn't have did it, you would have still been here and I just got to feed you and do whatever. I'm willing to do that, son. You're my son. Yeah. She said, I told him no. I mean, there's I nothing said, much worse than losing your kid. That part. And I'm young, too. Yeah. She said, if you're going to go, you got to go on your own. Yeah. But I'm not pulling that plug. And I fought and I made it. Yeah, for sure. You would give up every last dollar you had yeah. to just try. And then you got to think about this. All my brother and sister had daddies. So she felt like I was like the outcast of the kid because they coming to pick them up. But then I'm like, what's Damn, up with me? Really? Well, yeah, what's up with me? Like, why ain't nobody coming to grab me? Uh, so you have memories of that? That, that yes. made you feel inferior as a kid? Yeah. Like my there's daddy, something wrong with you? My daddy brother, Uncle D, my Uncle D, rest in peace, him and my grandmother, the Jenny May, they came once we did the blood test, but Uncle D was already there before the blood test. They did the blood test, 99.9, this is your child. He like... Oh, that's the white man test. I don't believe in that. Oh, man. I remember this shit like it was yesterday. I probably was like seven, eight years old. I remember a lot of shit since I was young because I was just paying attention. Like, the fuck? I see this odd shit going on. Christina, Tiny, Daddy, come get them. Corey, Daddy, me and him got the same daddy. That's the cold part about it. You'll come get this light-skinned boy. And my mama not light-skinned at all, you. But you come get him before you ever thought about coming get me, and I'm your twin. Facts. That's fucked. Think about this, though. 
he he had low riders. I'm a low rider fan. I love low riders. Right. I, to this day, I do. I had one. I, I'm, those Mexican dudes can tell can attest that you love low riders. Yes. <laughs> I was out there on Crenshaw and the Adams. They love me. So I see him one day, and I'm with a gang of my friends. I'm like, oh, that's my daddy, because I know she said me and Corey got the same daddy. Right. Man, that nigga said, I ain't your daddy. Fuck me up. Now they laughing. Ha, ha, ha. Fuck me up, bro. You think that's part of why you got on the streets? Yeah, a whole you part of it. You angry yeah. as fuck about that? Yes. Mm. Yeah. I was angry than the motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie. I I'm mean, forgiving, but I don't forget. It's one thing to not have a dad. It's another thing for your your yeah. actual dad to deny you. And live right around the corner, though. Yeah, what the fuck? And live directly around the corner. I can hit the gate and end up in his backyard. Damn. Facts. And you ever talk to him now? or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when my Uncle D died, he tried to come in my life and stuff. I let him. I forgive. I don't forget. But as far as me picking that phone up, calling him, my hey, Pops, or me calling him, Pops, now, what's up, James? How right. you doing? Like, you man, ever, like, express to him how you yeah, felt? Yeah, I did. I tried to swing on him and everything. That's the other question. I was yeah, kind of yeah, wondering. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And his own brother said, if y'all don't whoop his motherfucking ass, talk about real my brother. Then my mama brother pulled up and looked at my brother Corey, said, this, he touched your brother, y'all better dog walk him up 51st and Figueroa right there. Wow. No cap. Damn. I hope he sees this and knows how bad he fucked up. Nah, for sure. I think he know because he tried to call my phones and I forwarded, hoping that he's sharp enough to know that you've been mm. forward. I'm not messing with you. But his wife called me. My little brother called me. I went to his party. You feel me? But as far as you trying to reach out, you better <laughs> off telling uh, stepmom to call her little bro. But That's yeah. one thing me and AD and T-Rell have talked about a bunch is just like how important it is for us to just be good dads and how like really that's the most important thing. How do you feel about people in your life when you see them being shitty parents and just I don't respect not it. respecting the relationship? I don't respect it, man, because that counts in the kid's life. Mm. You bring a kid into this world, Adams, that counts. Like, you can't just bring a kid in this world and just think that, nah, bro, you got to be in that kid's like 365, seven days a week until that kid 18, even after that. Because if you don't, that kid is subject to fall into the streets, get killed, and everything. You better blame yourself for that. Mm. You got to. Yeah. Because I know how I felt. Like, I always wanted the daddy, like, just to come pick me up. So I know it fucked my mind up, so I know it's messing these kids up. But I could say I could see a lot of people taking care of their kids these days, people I know, like, really being fathers, 365, mm. seven days. Do you think that the tide is kind of changing in that regard? Because yeah. that that is that is the bad rap. Or the, I don't know if it's statistics, whatever, that black men get. Is this that the, the family unit rarely survives with the kids or whatever? I think there is like a higher divorce rate and higher percentages of kids who grow up without father figures and shit. I mean, it's like it's really just on everybody to kind of try to right that wrong because like we, we know that that is just the worst thing for a kid to not have a relationship with their dad. You can be divorced or whatever. It is what it is. Right. But just still, like, maintain the maintain relationship. That, yeah. yeah. Be, uh, what's they call it? Uh, Co-parent. Co-parent, yeah. Yeah, like, come on. But don't do that kid because you mad at the female or female. Don't yeah. do that dude because y'all mad. That kid ain't got nothing to do with it. That's when my shit come in at. Like, he blamed me with something, whatever him and my mama had going on. You taking it out on me. Ah, uh, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, that ain't right. That, and that'll fuck a kid up, like, mentally. Mm. Swear to God. So... Once you're fully like in the streets, you really like making money off that shit, or are you just on some straight, just hanging with the homies in the neighborhood shit? I was hanging, but I didn't have to make money because like I, I we was all we wasn't no good kids, grew up with money, but I got some of his family in that area where I didn't have to. I could go, oh yeah, let me get this, huh, boy, huh? Here you go, go and get up out of here. Mm. I choose to do what I was doing when I was out there selling drugs, like. Cause I'm I'm tired of asking them. I'm tired of having to get a speech from them. Right. So I'm gonna go on and get this little quarter piece and flip this. You feel me? And that's how that became. But I didn't have to at all. Right. But you got real deep into that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. For sure. For sure. I went to jail over it. Went to juvenile hall over it and all that type of shit. How you go to jail for? You just get pulled over to search the car or something? Nope. I was walking, going to my uh, auntie Patrice's house. Get to her house. She was barbecuing. Crash unit pulled right up. Beep. Cause they seen me serve somebody across the street at the shopping center, mm. so they waited to see where I was going. And once I got in the yard, talking to everybody, that was barbecuing. It came up, whoop, poop, grabbed me, and went right to where the sack was at. I always think about what it would be like to run a drug empire. I do too, but I'm scared because it's time behind <laughs> me that. Too, yeah. yeah. I never been to the pen. I be 35 November 11. I never been to the penitentiary. I'm a county misdemeanor. Right. Nigga. 
I just always think about how you could do it with like such minimal chance of getting caught, but then it's like you get caught. You gotta and, get caught when you're doing that. Yeah. You, you you gotta go to jail. Yeah. And if you don't, I mean, you telling you working with the people or something. Mm. Ain't nobody that sold drugs can't say I ain't never went to jail or you working with the people. Yeah. You know people in your life though that you feel like they're millionaires off selling drugs and they they never had like serious legal consequences. No, because I was taught a spade is a spade. So if you ain't went through none of that, and you you working with them peoples. Yeah? So you Fact. just assume that? Ain't no assuming. Everybody else getting hit around this motherfucker, but Adam's good, though. <laughs> they ain't went to Adam's house not once. And Adam's rolling harder than anybody, though. Like, okay, we know what time it is with you. Yeah, I got to keep my nose clean. That part. <laughs> got to dance on the water and not get wet. That part. Come on, man. It was real. <laughs> no, that's real. Shout out Ice Cube. That's real. Did he say that? Yeah. I could oh, dance shit. underwater and not get wrecked. It's raining bullets and I'm still here. <sighs> Young black in a wheelchair. You need a V8. Yeah, forgot where I got that. it, dude. Yeah, I've been saying that. that for years. Yeah. I forgot that's where I first heard it. Yeah, come on, man. 80s baby. I'm going to take you back, man. <laughs> <laughs> no cap. No cap. No, I think after uh, uh, MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice, Ice Cube was my first CD. Was that right? First rap CD. Shout out to them. Yeah, man. It was my like first, second grade. Them, all them. Took me a minute to realize MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice were doing something different. Yeah, they they, they <laughs> changed the game. Yeah, Vanilla it was fire. Ice yeah. changed the game. But I knew something was different when I heard Ice Cube and NWA and shit. I'm like, oh, no, nah, this is it. Yeah, for sure. I can't listen to this friendly music And then music, look at the rap they got shit. now, though. Ain't nothing compared to back then when we grew up off of, like, I'm not knocking it or nothing like that, but. I really, I was just up here. We did the uh, Thursday, uh, the back at the end of the day show. Right. Terrell is going at it, talking about this music stuff. And for 30 minutes, I'm mad in my head. They thought I was mad because Terrell asked about my mama ass or something. But I really didn't know what they were talking about. They naming all these rappers. I'm like, mm. y'all on my lean now. Y'all done threw me for a loop. Yeah. So when the show was over, Terrell, like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, bro, I really don't. He like, you don't know what you Who was he talking about that you didn't know? All of them. <laughs> And I listen to rap, but I know these youngsters. But you know L.A. Face. shit? You just don't really pay attention. Were they talking about shit from out of state? I probably was in state, <laughs> out of state, but I ain't heard these dudes. Like, you got to say a song to me, then I'll be like, oh, that's who that is? Then you got to show me a picture of them, and I'm like, I never knew. I just like the song. That's something I think about sometimes. If you were a rap fan in 1998, you probably knew about, like, you know, 40 rappers or some shit. For sure. Nowadays, bro, we, we know hundreds and hundreds and thousands of rappers. Dude, and we might you, never have heard a song from him. Would you believe that half of us right now to this day listen to music but never seen the person or don't know who that person is if they see him right now? But then when you tell them that's who that is, you're going to be like, damn, I fuck with that song. Well, that's what TikTok is a thousand percent. A thousand percent? That, yeah, because there's so many songs that are huge on there and the artist is like a nobody. No, like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I fuck with the song, but I never knew how his face looked. Because I get hit up to do interviews with dudes who... They gotta, and, and it's it's that's what's weird. TikTok, it's not even a whole song. It's right. like you, we used to have like all the Atlanta dudes, the snap rappers and shit from that Soldier Boy era, where right. there would be the Laffy Taffy and all that type of bullshit. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there was a lot of those songs where it's like the songs were huge and you didn't really like know the names of the fucking dude. But now with TikTok, it's like you know ten seconds of the song. You never it. even heard of the two minute song. See how the game changed. Shit did change. The game stay the same, but the players change. You see, this technology is just, huh, huh, huh. Now you don't even need no record label or nothing. Instagram, YouTube, you're going to get signed. The other day I watched a video about a beef between two rappers, and one of them, the shit was so savage about all the, the beef between them that I was like, you know what? I'm going to actually listen to this dude's music. Yeah, to see what is what it was. <laughs> you make me want to see what he's talking about now. Yeah. Like, you beef with him so hard. Like, right. Let me go see what he's talking about. He must be saying some real shit. Cause I, but you know what's fucked up is I click on the video and it says no cap versus honeycomb brazy. And I click on it and then I watch the whole fucking video and I realize that no cap and honeycomb brazy did have a beef. But Honeycomb Brazy, somebody went into his grandparents' house and killed his grandparents and fucking shot a pipe that burnt the whole house down. There's got to be some out of town. It's here. not. It's not no cap. It's not coming from his click or whatever. Like you, when you watch the video, they they caught the dude who did it. It's coming from some other shit. Mm -hmm. The video title has you thinking that no cap fucking killed this guy's family. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They changed the whole narrative up. Yeah. That's crazy. Realistically, that is kind of what got me to click. And when it was out of town, though, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn. Down south shit. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. That's some foul shit.
Wow. You kill my grandparents? That's real beef right there. This new beef they got. That's real beef. Like that's What is the, life like after that? You killed my granny. Pipe bomb went off. You ever heard of some shit like that? No, sir. I'm not going to yeah, cap that's some, you know. I hope that, no. that doesn't ever become normal. Nah, I hope it don't, but you wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Shit. Bad enough there's the whole practice in gangs of just driving around somebody's neighborhood to kill somebody just because they live near somebody that you don't like. I mean, that's fucking foul enough, but killing grandparents, Jesus Christ. You, you know, they do that. People that kill kids and grandparents, you go to jail. God bless your heart. Yeah. You're not going to make it. Mm. Or you got to go PC and they still going to poke you. Right. Damn. It's crazy. So, okay. like what, what, So you're just in the streets for all these years. When shit started to change? Just life started to change when School Boy Q blows up? Like, no. What's before that? Uh, Back then, like, I used to, like, you know, how could I put it? How could I put it? I used to be in that uh Don Magic Wine game. Ah, know? okay. Yeah, like, deep, all the way. Deep, mm. deep, deep. I'm talking about deep. Like, I'm still known in the game around the world. I done been to the biggest parties they throw. Like, no cap, facts. So you were into the culture of it. You were going to the events and the conventions and all yeah, that shit that Sharp be doing? It. And I was a part of it, though. I'm really going with my four, five year to me. They like, look at little smack. Yeah. So you were saying? on Fig? Yeah, for sure. You're back on Fig now, but you were on Fig I then. I was on Figs in the car, sleeping, hearing hearing uh, horses come by. You know, you hear the clack, clack, clack. You think it's some horses, but it's the lettos just... <laughs> hear me? That's how I say it. I'm in the car. Why are you sleeping in the car? Because I had to grind it out. You feel me? Like I'm a young dude, so so you got to be on on the site no, while while your that. employees are working. Not even that. I didn't have a ID at the time. You feel me? To go get a room. You feel me? I didn't have a car. The car wasn't even working. Mm. That's how cold I was. The car wasn't even working. It was my people's stuff, and we just sleeping in that motherfucker because we young. Right. And we get up, boop, let's walk down, fit, go to 51st, huh? do your thing, boop, bop. We're going to link back right here. Like, it was real. Like, I did that for years. Mm. Years. And you did well doing it? Hell yeah. What made you get out of it? When Q started rapping, and I was out of town in Oakland doing my thing. When you're at your peak, though, doing that, how many girls you got working for you? Uh, probably like five, and we was catching the Greyhound to uh, Arizona. So you just go hit different towns and just put in work. Yeah, I get the room, boop, bop. We all in the room, boop. Send them out. I'm in the room. They know what time it is. They know what to do. So you we, throw an ad up, and then you got fifty dudes coming through. That's the thing. I was a street one. Uh -huh. you know, I was concrete. Really? I can keep them ass. I don't hate on them, but I need mine to touch the concrete. That for sure, though. So how you mean your clients? On the blade. They uh, walking uh, uh, MacDowell, 51st School in Arizona. They doing that. They got the mouthpiece. I gave them the game for that. I don't want to see the client in case the client messing up. Then that's when they going to meet And me. so you're out there with five chicks? Five chicks for like three months at a time. I swear to God. Just grinding every day? Every day. You ever get caught up doing this? Never in my life. Never. Swear to God. So you're outside with a hammer on you every day doing this shit, and you never had the cops run up and have to and search you? That's the thing. When I was out there pimping, you got to lead that game banger to the side. So really? I never had that. When you in that it's game. It's just not necessary because you're no. never going to get, get – because the, the Johns are not on that level. They're not trying to – Not even that. It's just when you jump into that game, you can't mix oil and water. Mm. So when you say you this – you got to be this. You can't come to Fig and be around this right here and then say, cuz, they're going to be like, oh, you got to get away from us. We only, You feel me? And these is people from everywhere because everybody come from somewhere. Mm. These people from everywhere. I never knew where they was from until 10 years, 13 years down the line. Like, damn, that's an enemy. But he's so cool, and we never talked about that because we this. So Fig is just a different world where all the gang affiliations don't get mentioned? Yeah, in that game, yeah. I mean, you was on 69th and Figaro back then, back in the day? No, it was chinchillas on, they had on. Yeah, police ride by and do you like this. Hey, no, we come in peace. I wonder what the lives are like of the people who live there. Ugly. <laughs> like, what are the housing prices like over there? Ugly. <laughs> like, I own our house over there. Like, I don't give a fuck how cheap the house is. If you got all this crazy-ass shit happening in front of my Think crib. You could walk out your door and see a car just... Yeah. Uh, think about it. With no tent, though. No, she's just getting banged out looking at you like, yeah, it's going to be over. I guess if you like a grandma living over there, 
And you just stay in the crib all day. Not even the grandmas. They hate it. They gonna come out with their flashlight. You know yeah, the grandma not you gonna tolerate that. You gotta go. They gonna flash it and let you know. Yeah, yeah. If you don't leave off this flash, now I'm gonna call now or what? Right. But they ain't scared. Nah, they won't. Jesus wasn't scared. They gonna come out fast. Y'all leaving condoms out here? Get the fuck from in front of my house with all that nasty shit. <laughs> <laughs> so who lives over there? It's just the families and shit, or what? Yeah, basically like you got like, a lot to explain to your kids when you're taking them out there and you got a bitch walking naked down the street. That's why I said I grew up in a cold environment, man. Yeah. Think about that. I grew up around pimps, gangbangers, Max, whatever you can think of is on Fig and Hoover all the way to Hardale. Think about it. Like I live a crazy life. I had to walk to school and look at prostitutes out there. You hear me? Mama said, put your head this way. I'm trying to hear me. I got to tie my shoe. I right. was, I was, I was, that shit turned me on. Shit, I was loving it. What's the key to dealing with that many Wild ass chicks. Uh, basically the key is because you know that's five different personalities. You feel me? That's yeah. Five different personalities. It's all about manipulation, man. You just gotta <laughs> have that mouthpiece. That's what pimping is: professional and manipulating people. P I M P. Professional and manipulating people. Not lock it to my pockets or none of that. So you gotta have patience and you gotta have a mind for this. Cause this game is a thinking game. You change and can't nobody just get in the game and say, oh, "I'm a P." You could down a girl right now. That don't mean you're a pimp. Did you watch the episode with Sharp and Suspect and uh, Kelby? Yeah, that shit had me dying laughing. But what's he doing wrong? I feel like Kelby's a he's gonna be a big force in the pimping game. I he's got a big that, future think, ahead of him. <laughs> nah, I think that hopefully he don't get around the wrong people. That's gonna have him crash and burn I, I and take hope, advantage. I of hope them. the cops don't take too much interest in that interview because I'm just watching that. Sh- not not that one actually, the soft heart underbelly one. I'm watching that just like, bro, why are you on here just telling on yourself? Like, all, how come all the gangbangers know not to go on camera and talk about who they shot, but then a fucking pimp will go on camera and be like. Well, I mean, to his credit, Sharp is smart. Sharp, Sharp, no, nah, nah, he got a mouthpiece on him. To this I day, him. I don't know what the fuck Sharp is into. Right. I don't know. Like, I that's, just it, that's how I supposed to be. I don't ask a lot of questions, right. but you know, I feel like even if I ask very specifically, he's probably not going to really divulge too much. Whereas that Kelby kid sitting there telling Mark, "Yeah, these are these are my prostitutes." You never seen Sharp with a girl. Nah. Well, I have, but nah, other people don't. The, hey, that's part of the game. He's sharper than a razor. Keeps all that shit hidden. You got to. You can't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. But then people think, people are like, I never seen Sharp with a girl. That's good. That's a blessing. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to. But that chili coming through. Yeah. You hear me? That Luther Lufay is coming through. But that takes confidence. Because I was always the dude who would be ha- be around some hot chicks in the club. Boom. We post some Instagram photos. I ain't fuck these girls. Right. But I'm just taking a picture with a bunch of hot ass girls. That part. You doing a look. I'm like getting the reputation for fucking hella chicks more so than I was actually fucking. Right. It's not good. And you a cold dude in the game. Yeah, I did my research just like you. I did. I said, Ooh. You was on Plug Talk? I've been on all I said. This nigga Adam's a cold individual, boy. <laughs> you hear me? Like, I, I fucks with you. Doing porn's you. cold? Yeah, because you Kinda getting your right? Like, bro, that's like the game. That's like pimping to me right there. Like, that's a player shit, nigga. You can fuck who you want to, nigga. And I got my girl with me. Yeah, mm. she gonna tag team the bitch with me. Like, nigga, that's the game, nigga. Because I didn't knock five on them down, nigga. And got through two or three. It was like, huh, you got to take this finger real quick. Uh, yeah, I got you on the rebound. But, bro, I know some porn star dudes who, they're, they're like, just a dude from L.A. Like you, like, regular guy. But his him putting in a day of hustling is him driving around to three, four different chicks' cribs. Taking photos, doing the TikToks, doing the Instagram stories, fucking them, getting the clip, going home, editing it, putting it on OnlyFans, all this shit. Like, that's their hustle. The same way I'm in here doing a bunch of fucking interviews. Right. They're driving around, dipping and diving up to the valley, downtown, boom, bam. All right, like, that boom. Let me ask you a just question. Just serve a dick. And I love it. I love that that's like the modern crack dealer. Right. Now, there's still crack dealers, but this is a it's a new crack dealer. Right, right. So tell me this. I always want to ask somebody, and I can ask you because I feel you're in that area. You're in that porn store stuff, right? Right. Hey, for them to be dog-walking them females like that, they got to be off something, though, huh? Like some type of medicine they give them to go that long? Or a what? lot of them are. It's called what? A lot of them are. Oh, okay. A lot of them are. It got to be like, for you to go two, three, four hours, <laughs> nigga, just strictly pounding, like, you cold. What you off of? Yeah. What are you off of, dog? Like, a lot God. of them might pop something. Okay, good shot. <laughs> And there's yeah. and there's wild shit out there. Let me tell you, my God, there's like a prick, like like a thing you almost like a little tiny shot that you put into your dick, 
I heard that shit turns your dick into a cannon for four or five hours. I'm not going to shop nothing. <laughs> I hate needles. I hate when they got to draw blood. But if you ever are watching porn and you're like, how the fuck is this dude just pounding the shit out of a pussy for a half hour straight like this? Because I done started the yeah. same time he going. <laughs> next thing you know, I'm like, ooh. And next thing you know, he's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, ooh, they cold. Yeah. And a lot of them are enhanced surgically, I think. You think so? Or put some juice, some gel, some gel in there, make the shit bigger. Some crazy oh, shit, bro. Man. I don't know though. They're yeah. all real quiet about it. None of nobody will admit that they do it, really. Right, 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 right. But right. in the same day, I talked to a uh, Rico Rico Strong. Told me about how he tried that one time, the thing with the prick in his dick, and how his dick got way too hard, scary as fuck. And he's then, on the plane. Uh, no, I, I don't think he's on the plane. He was just trying to fuck, and oh. like he, he had this, he shot the shit in his dick, right? And then I'm talking to an old ass dude who used to be a bank robber. And he uses it, too, to just fuck regular. Regular, he going in. But Rico, if you're a regular dude, you don't need all that. That's way too much. Yeah, that's out. All right, so take me to how Q starts blowing up. Are you watching him grind for years and years without much success, and then one minute it just starts popping off, or how does this go? Nah, nope. I'm going to keep it all. Are you getting a real inside view of this shit? I'm giving it to you raw and uncut. No. Let's go, TDE fan he, pages. Chop he, me up. He grew up playing sports. Baseball, uh, football, basketball. So for me to lie and be like, I knew you. No, I never knew he was rapping or nothing. Like mm. I'm, all I know is nigga, he trying to take care of my niece Joy. He making ends meet. You feel me? He in the streets. You feel me? He doing with regular streaming. So I'm like, damn. When he started rapping, it fucked me up because he was already signed to G G D G E D. Oh, the, oh, the uh, Gata thing. Yeah, G E. Oh, he was with that first? Yeah, G D E was him, Tiger. Right, yeah. Yeah, and some other cats. <laughs> so I pulled up on the block one day, like I'm rapping. I'm like, ah, that's right. You know, I'm in the game. I'm in the game hard. <laughs> the, so yeah. I pull up twenty foes, candy paint. I'm oh, beating. All right. I was yeah. I'm, so you're out there like that. Okay. Oh yeah, I had every yeah, that nice. part. So I'm like, all right, for sure. So he doing that and then next thing you know, I'm in Oakland. They like, Hey, you heard this song? It's a dude. Uh, to my Hoover this or whatever. I'm like, nah, I ain't heard it. But I'm used to the collie greens. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like, I'm listening. He, nigga, I'm from Hoover Street. Dirty pictures in my cell phone. 52nd Street, I'm well known. I'm like, nah, I don't know who this cat is. I call him. I like, you. Who is this nigga right here rapping? He said, bitch, that's me. <laughs> I said, oh, shit. Nigga, hold up. Let me go back and listen to him and call you back. I listened to him, I said, this is him, because he changed the game. When he came into the game, it was black hippies. He was doing the whole, you feel me? So for him to say that, like that street came out, you feel me? And I'm like, nigga, that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah, talk that shit, you feel me? Mm. And that's when I, he called me. He was like, where you at? I'm like, I'm in Oakland. I'm going to come to L.A. He like, pull up on me at the house. I pulled up on him, and it was history after that. He wasn't mad at you for not believing in his dream? Nah, because I didn't know nothing about your dream. I'm believing <laughs> something if I didn't know about it. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, how am I believing something if I didn't know about it? But if I knew, I'm going to support you. Yeah, you're going to do it. Just like you supported me when I was in the game. Like, nigga, you got this. But, okay, so where are you formally from? Because I hear you, you saying on um, Pyru. You say on Crip, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you, both of those apply. Nah, okay. I, I, you get deep. That's you getting I like excited your... about his Hoover bars? I'm just not sure exactly where you you just fucking with everything. Or... Nah, okay. that's the thing. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm glad you got into that topic. Okay. Because when I be like on Pyro, that's for my brother Slim 400. Like he was oh, at my house. Okay. I stayed next door to him, and like like we was tight. We was tighter than ever. I just did Mud Dollars his manager podcast. Shout out him. I just Shout out I, I flew to Vegas to do that. Rest in peace, to. Slim. Yeah. Yeah. So me and him. It's like this, man. So, man, that shit hurt me. Like, so when I say I'm Pyro, that's oh, to okay. keep my bro name alive. But yeah, you feel me? As far as the gang, I ain't with that no more. That used to be back in the days, but it's five one on mine. I'm a Fifty First Street baby. Right. You feel me? But so Q went a different route. Yeah. And was that had, ever? He had a daughter. He had no choice. It was like either what I'm gonna do, grow my daughter up on the block, or I'm gonna figure it out. He figured out. Oh, I can rap. And went in, started doing it, took it serious, and look where it got him, man. Right. So then how much you start moving around with him at that point? Once I came back, it was over. I went to his house. Uh, he was working on the song. Uh, with, uh, no, it was. I went to the studio. It was Tiger. 
uh, and him, uh, you could tell by the way I walked that I got it. Oh, that song. And mm. Tiger and it was on this. So I'm in the studio with him and shit. Boom. And Q like popping pills, popping zannies. I'm busting my moves and shit up in there. <laughs> Everybody in there like, who the fuck is this nigga? He, we love his energy. Mm. Q like, it's my brother, woo. And it was over. He like, man, I'm doing another album. It's called Blank Face. Woo woo. I'm like, how you the hype man? I'm like, let it go. I'd have been all around the world, triple time. Right. So did you actually really get out the streets at that point? Or yeah, like... it was over because he told me, you, you got to either pick that or pick this. I'm not bringing that life around my kids and stuff like I changed. Like, bro, I'm not, man, I'm rapping, I'm a rapper, I'm living. Like, bro, that's my past, nigga. I can't take away my past, my past, though. I ain't denying where I'm from, you feel me? But, yeah, I'm on a whole another level. Now, so, old habits die hard, though. Yeah. It's tough to make a clean break. Yeah. So you coming back home, you keeping your nose clean, like, even during that time, or? Yeah, I was staying clean, because I was listening to bro, like, mm. I see what you didn't got. Like, I seen you got the G-Wagon truck, he pull up, I was there right when he pulled up and got the G-Wagon truck, he pull up on me. Ah, uh, roly watch on, bro, I'm like, damn, this shit real, he like, jump in, let's go. And he just gaming me, like, bro. If you really want to do this, we're going to do this. I got your back no matter what. But you're moving around with him. How are you actually getting money at that time? Oh, shit. I was still mixing and dabbing in the game. You feel me? Because mm. I kept a girl around me. You know I mean? <laughs> Basically yeah. exactly yeah. what you just did not. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? I kept a girl in two years. You know what I mean? yeah. Whatever they do, they do. I ain't got no parts of that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> But yeah, I, that and bro, like you know, every birthday and shit, he was uh uh uh. But when he dropped his album, he like go get you a passport. I mm -hmm. did that, and he know I ain't got no felonies, so he like boom pop, and I went on tour, and it was history. What was that like for you though, seeing just all these other countries when you haven't really seen? Had was, you even seen the United States at that point? Or are you t are you doing those tours first? We did the Los Angeles tour first, yeah. Oh, wow. so we went to Texas, Houston, oh, all that. U.S. Down. tour, so, yeah. Yeah, we did the U.S. tour. What was crazy was that overseas, because I see this on TV. You feel mm -hmm. me? Yeah. If you don't, you don't see this. They this on TV. All these buildings, like. This shit look crazy to me, so it blew my mind. Why I didn't even want to come back. Like yeah, that's one of my favorite things is just seeing my friends who get to like experience France for the first time and just seeing their reaction to it. Yeah, just it's thinking crazy. About, you could, hey, imagine what they thinking in their head though. I yeah. broke down plenty of times on tour and cried like, damn, thank you God, thank you Q. Like, mm. bro, we on Paris, London, we in Russia, China. Wherever you could think I done been. What are you actually doing on the road, though? Like, how are you making yourself useful and making sure you're a part of this Before, operation? So my my boy Mac Wapper set up the DJ shit. Boop, bop, bop, bop. So, boom, he had people that come out before Q. And Q, the last little artist that's going to come out because he the mainstream. It's his show. Right. So, boom, before he come out, Mac Wap playing the music, I'm already out there turning the crowd up. I'm on the stage. They love my energy. You feel me? Mac Wap will play a song that he know I'm going to go crazy to. And I go mingle with the crowd, crank them up, jump on top of the cage. Ah! So when he come, they ready. And so I get off the stage like, bro, he like, I seen it. They ready. Mm -hmm. said they finna go crazy. I said, they going crazy for me. So imagine what they finna do for you. So that's the vibe we was going off of. You feel me? And then when he on stage... Certain songs I know to come out like on uh, Tookie Nose. That was one of the main songs I come out on Dope Dealer because I was on that song. With but are you like before. the main hype man or does he have yeah. another hype man? Nah, it's me. You always need a hype man. Yeah, it's me. You got because you're rapping, so you need somebody else to be really yeah, like, like jumping when up he and get down. Get tired, I gotta keep yeah. it going. You feel me? No, it's me. I'm the only one for him. Okay, it's fire. So like. How much time do you spend in the whole TDE unit at that time? Because is everybody really like together as a group at that time when you start coming around? Yeah, because uh, when when I came around, it was that's crazy. It was around this time my birthday. Kendrick dropped that Pimp a Butterfly, mm. and he had a show somewhere where it was a couch just like this. Q called me like he had Q just bought that McLaren. He like yeah, you want to go with me to Kendrick's show? I'm like hell yeah, let's go. So I met Dot. You feel me? I thought Top was security because. I knew the light skinned dude was Kendrick Security 2Ts. I'm like, okay, that's 2Ts. But top right there, I'm like, man, this nigga got too many big securities the whole time. He the man. <laughs> he's too big. He can't yeah, be a manager. All I see is a big, <laughs> yeah, he like a Suge Knight. He just yeah. big red. He just like this. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's security right there. He's nah, like, for real, that's got to be a problem, though. If you like real successful rich dude, but you look like security, unless you like dripping in chains or you man, like. Top ain't that type. He you got to rock like mad Versace fits yeah. and shit, or else you're just going to look like a security guard. He's coming with 501. 
ones, a white <laughs> shirt with a TDE hat on, with a TDE hoodie on, with some Jordans on. Right. I swear to God. Yeah, that's like the security guard outfit. And that's him. He just. Because I like wearing like all black. I was really dressed like real simple black hoodie, yeah, black for jeans. Sure. For sure. Whatever. But the, you kind of look a security guard. Yeah. Uh, I don't really look a security guard, but if a, if if I was with a, a pussy enough person, right? Like when I'm with a chick, I kind of look like a security guard. Cause you got all black on. But if I'm a if I'm with a rapper, I'm not looking like I'm protecting a rapper. Rappers need different type of security. Right, and top of the security size. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he looks like the size security the schoolboy Q needs. Q Q got Mingo. Mingo oh, yeah. a brick. Okay. You ain't seen Mingo? I don't know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> ain't nobody running up on Mingo. Nah, but like you know, a lot of like. Man, there's a lot of like celebrities and shit who got pussy ass little security guards Facts. guarding their house and shit. Facts. As a rapper, it's a little different. Facts. Yeah. A yeah, lot of true. places out there. You go to an old folks' home, they're going to have an old folks' security guard. Because sure, what the fuck are they protecting it against? With a 357 on it. <laughs> Maybe. Blow you back. <laughs> all right. So, but, all right. So, everybody was still like a real unit through that whole time period. When when does it start to feel like everybody's kind of going their separate ways? Because I feel like everybody like everybody's becoming such big solo artists and shit that they're so focused on their own shit that everybody kind of got to start being more separate, right? Not really, but like it, if somebody do want to uh, want to leave, like it's all love. It's called growth. That's what we we're not gonna be with each other forever. Eventually, and you gonna want to do this. You might want to start a clothing store, and like I'm through rapping. I want to start a clothing store, so you can't leave because you want no. Like so, we support everybody. You feel me? Everybody. Like we not tripping. Like you feel me? I just was at my boy Kendry. He sold out four shows. Yeah, at the uh, the Strom. What they call that new one downtown? Oh, I forget, but I know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, four sold out four back to back when really? he came out here. Yes, and I didn't I, know that. I went to the last two, me, the homies. We all was up there, like we support. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't no, it ain't no beef because I know a lot of people be like, "Oh, you Kendrick Glove? Is it problem? No, we talk to Kendrick every day. Kendrick talked to us. Yeah, I no see problem. a lot of conspiracy theories to be like, look at how the Kendrick's music is leaking. It, it's TDE trying to get at him by nah, leaking that's all, shit. That's all. That's all. Just uh, like I said, that's all. Um, uh, 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 what they call them? It, them people trolls. That's all trolls. That's it. You know what I mean? It's up to you if you believe it, cause they make it sound good. But right. nah. Yeah, nah. cause I never seen any of that shit make it past like a random Twitter account. I never seen anybody nah. repeating that shit who had much clout. Yeah, nah. but maybe I'll hear about it now. Um, but okay, so from your but could you have ever seen Kendrick eventually deciding they wanted to do his own thing like yeah i could see everybody all of us we're not going to want to do the same thing like right now look i got the hype man thing going and now i'm in this podcast and like and i love it i love this podcast who never thought i could really sit here and people want to hear me conversate and they like what i'm conversating about yeah it's called growth right yeah like come on it's only growth man yeah for sure. Well, what do you say to the fans who thought that they were going to see TDE stay together forever and they feel kind of heartbroken about it? The one thing you can say, though, is that TDE is like a fucking vault. You don't get any fucking information. The fans yeah. are kind of just in the dark. They don't know about okay, anything well, going on behind the scenes. Is, you are uh, being similarly vault-ish. Like, what I can say for the fans is, man, it's growth, man. You feel me? I know you expect us all to still be together. We expect our mamas and daddies to be together for life, but it's not going to happen. Eventually, we're going to grow. You want to do this. This person don't want to. What if they all, what if everybody say, we don't want to rap no more. We want to start a business now. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just growth, man. But you ever had that conversation about how important it is, like, to as a unit not to put your drama out there or not yeah, to, like, like have our, every, our shit publicly? Is not everybody's business. Just like Adam business is not everybody business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, the business just be takes on a life of its own and becomes a whole different thing where, say, Q and Kendrick yelled at each other one time in the studio for 10 minutes. I mean, if there's a video and it's on fucking TMZ. They going to say, oh, they going to put the narrative <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. They got on Yeah, that's just. Whereas but, if you just do that in isolation and then life goes on and you forget about it, it's, it's not that, you know? Right, right. Literally, if there was that video, that might be like, the biggest thing that happened in hip hop that year. Right. Once you reach a certain level of celebrity, you got to be real careful you putting out there. For sure, that's facts. That's facts. That's facts. No cap. But we so, good. We good. How do you view Q like going long ass periods of time without releasing music? And Kendrick's like the same way. And really, uh, all, really everybody. TDE. Cause it's like this. It's like this with us. Okay, say Q. 
uh, drop an album and then won't drop for two, three years, right? Y'all got to remember, when he do drop, he's giving you bangers. When Dot drop, he's giving you bangers. But people got lives outside of rapping. People got kids, you feel me? People got all type of real-life problems going on that the world don't know about or can't know about because all our business ain't their business, you know what I'm saying? So right. whatever their reason is for taking a break, best believe when they come back, it's curtains, cancel Christmas. But I think it's all, it's just surprising to a lot of people when they don't get music for like four or five years when they know that Kendrick is probably realistically in the studio multiple times per week. I don't know how much he records, but he's probably in there all the time. Uh, same thing with Q, whatever. And, you know, for, for somebody like me, like you see me going into work and just doing podcasts and releasing them as they're coming out. But with like a lot of these TDE guys, it's like, damn, did you seriously just – record for five years to make this fucking album like and you what, waited for like, five years and what is out what happened behind the scenes like for five fucking years like how how much did this album change over the years like it's just it is hard for me as somebody who is not up close and personal to the creative process to understand especially because most people i know who make music pretty much like just make music and release it within like six months mm -hmm. For sure. But I'm not around artists with the career of Kendrick or And then Q. you got to think about it. Kendrick and Q is rich. They got money. Like, mm. they're not hurting. But it's like, we got families. We got real life stuff we going through. But like, everybody got families and they still go to work every day. Yeah, but they going to work. But when they bring their work <laughs> and come in and then you press play, you like this. Oh, it's I just hard. I bet you everybody, when he dropped his albums and they drop, everybody forget about all that five years. They in here like this. Like, oh, this, okay, yeah. What, we right. here, hypothetical question. If Do you think that if Q and Kendrick had dropped once a year, every year since they came out, just the, the best songs that they made that year, every year, what do you think their careers would be like at this point? You think they would have a bunch of okay projects? Or you think that everybody is like a wobbler? Everybody, some projects gonna be fire, some gonna be mid, some gonna be trash that you'll probably never hear. It's just that's the game, you feel me? But yeah, they would have had ups and downs like roller coasters, it's like just everybody weird. else. Think about if you have five Kendrick albums instead of one Kendrick album that showed each year of his life throughout that. And do you think the fans would have been happier with that? Ultimately, obviously, it's I his believe, decision. I, I, but yeah, it's their decision. But I'm like the fans too. Like I, I'd be ready to go on tour every other year. I'm ready to go. Right. So I feel y'all. I'm with y'all fans. Like man, I'm ready to go on tour and turn it up. You but really? if you're Kendrick, it's like you get to tour exactly as much as you feel like it. But you got to think about Kendrick when he do tours. He's selling out arenas. He's not doing no right. Hollywood. Like he, everything he touch is arenas. Let's get that. And and, and that's arenas. Mm. Everywhere he touched, he's not doing nothing little. It ain't nothing, nah, arenas. He getting that Luther Lufe. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> he getting that chili. I ain't going to cap. Right. But, uh, okay, when, when you see people making YouTube videos talking about, like, the downfall of TDE, I, what do you think? Do you, you think that there's any truth opinion? to that, or do you think that it's still going strong and there's going to be, like, another resurgence? Because obviously losing Kendrick is, like, a pretty big blow to a label, right? Yeah, no, it's not. No, 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 no. Please tell me, I don't break that down. How is that a big blow? Like, well, he's one of the best selling artists currently. As far as losing him as, oh, he's not under TDE no more. Like, yeah, you okay. Know. Like everybody go through shit. We hurt though, but it's like, bro, he gotta grow. He gotta do him. Like he can't. We all ain't gonna be with TDE for death. Right. That's what, like the world want to see. They want to see TDE for death. You feel me? Like right. But when you see when, NWA for death. But when you but review the strength or status of TDE and Kendrick is no longer officially releasing music under TDE, you got to be like, okay. They just thinking too hard. If Lil Baby left QC, you would have to say, okay, QC took a hit. As far as, so you where said, does you QC said go from here? You said as far as money wise, money clout respect, whatever, all the things that come with having one of the biggest artists in the world on your label. Uh, you know, And obviously they got plenty of other shit going on. Different strokes with different folks, but ain't nobody hurt, ain't nobody happy, ain't nobody sad. It's like, really, it's growth. Mm. Look who top is. That's top. <laughs> right. Look what you got. J-Rock, Grammy nominated, winning motherfucker. Right. You feel know I me? Mean? You'd like, be golfing with Q? Yeah, I be golfing with him. I just did a golf thing with him just like last month sometime. How did he get into that? Uh, that right there is crazy. You asked that because when I when I went to his house, you feel me? It was him and Barack. They like yeah. Uh, Barack Obama. 
Nah, Barack. Oh. That's one of uh, our peoples. Oh. So, uh, I should have assumed I'm, that. Yeah. Nah, I danced. <laughs> you probably would have said Obama. <laughs> nah, Obama's daughter was at the Kendrick show, though. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, she danced with me and everything. I feel like they're real careful about what they let her do. Remember when one of the fucking uh, Joey Badass, one of his homies, was like on FaceTime with Barack's daughter one time, rocking a, a shirt or some shit? I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be a lot of pressure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Adams, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just start talking about what it would be like to be Obama's daughter. Man. All right, where were we at, though? I don't know. Cause I'm no, because he's with kicking you. with Barack. Yeah. Who's with kicking. Barack? No, Q was with Barack, okay. and uh, Q had just had bought the Maybach at the time. It was that year, Maybach and everything. And I'm like, yeah, they got golf things in the back seat. Right. So we went out there, you feel me? And basically, like, that gives him a peace of mind. When he go there, he he, he just stress free because, like I said, everybody we human. Some thing, some things that I do that get my mind right is doing other shit. You feel me? But that gets his mind right. But like, so you go out there and you play? Nah, I just oh, like okay. to hit it and see how far I, I can make the ball. Go I right can't. Um, oh yeah, just like yeah, because it just, got numbers yeah. on it and you can hit. I can never it. in a million years imagine going out there and having to actually get that little ball into a hole that's like five hundred feet away. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, I'm not and, gonna. I can't do that. It's gonna, I'm gonna have to hit it like 30 times. And it's it's like a mind thing, and it's quiet out there. You don't hear <laughs> yeah. no. Uh, uh, it's quiet. Mm. I'm talking about. I'm like, damn, that's a lot of people. Ain't nobody. Well, let me keep my mouth shut. I know I'm a loud mouth from the ghetto. You feel me? But, but he's doing like golf media and like yeah. golf sponsorship type mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, that's where we just came from. He performed up there. That's golf. crazy. Top golf. We just came from Top Golf. He performed up there and everything. I mean, that's like if you're famous, you could just take on an interest mm -hmm. and then just like get a bunch of business r related to that interest. You know, yeah. if you just became mad good at chess, you all of a sudden chess? you're. I do, but not like good. That's hard. I don't know how to. No, nah, that's too much. But I mean, like if a rapper, if Lil Baby just got real good at chess, all of a sudden they're gonna be paying him a hundred grand to go perform at a chess tournament. Look at uh, Grizzly. You seen how GTA? much he just said mm -hmm. he made playing a video game mm -hmm. and showed the people? Like, yeah, he, it's crazy. That was crazy. But what, what he's doing is, like, not that different from, like, OnlyFans or whatever because he's just got a shitload of people paying him, I assume, a small so amount. Why can't play the game? No, but they can be in it. They're, like, in the game. Like, they can play against him and uh -oh. his homies, I think. They're all in GTA together, I think. But it's, like, I think it's, like, five or ten bucks or some shit like that. So it's like the same way that all these girls are getting rich. T Grizzly's like figuring out how to do that as a dude. The same way as when you see you guys or AD or whatever on right. Twitch and YouTube and you got subscriptions and all that. It's kind of like same shit. But it's crazy to, that he's doing it in the GTA GTA world. That's, right. That's what's called. When that's, I've seen that, I'm like, I that, might need to start playing video games again. Because then when I think about what everybody talks about with the metaverse, I'm going to build the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, GTA is just a bunch of motherfuckers who can hear each other talk. They're running around in this world, playing with each other and just living their life and talking to each other and doing these make-believe missions and whatever. I mean, how is that not the metaverse? It's basically the same fucking thing, right? Same fucking thing. Like, I was into Call of Duty. I, I was into that. I had the whole set thing. I'm online on PlayStation. Right. Like, I know they get caught up in that shit because I did. You know, I think I've been on here saying that I think that, like, long-term games like GTA probably cause people to be more violent. But I actually saw a study that said that when GTA does come out, that violence drops and murders drop because everybody's just in the crib playing it. What, what world is that? Like America? What? That can't be because, yeah, them people that's in the house playing it is computer geeks that don't come outside anyway. No, but, but look, like somebody like you, you play it, right? I played uh, Call of Duty and I stopped after that. I had every Call of Duty, but I stopped after that. But It's kind of depressing to think, though, that the more people play video games and are in the crib and watch Netflix and shit, the, the less that they're going to be killing each other. So it's like if those are the two options that we're offering is like be in the crib playing video games or go out in public and get murdered. I'm going to play video games. God yeah. bless your heart. I'm going to be on Call of Duty. Kind of sad, though. I just like spent so much of my life outside. Yeah. And it's kind of sad that like the lesson we've learned is like don't go outside. Do you know, I, I, T. Real told me, I, you, you did you have a... Uh, What's his name with the red hair, the rapper dude? Uh, threw, Mario Judah. He threw a party at your store down there one day, and y'all line. Uh, this when T. Real had Last Kings. It was the Last Kings store. Dude, I don't think no, we didn't do a Mario Judah pop up though. 
And it was something you threw a party. Who's another red hair rapper? That Famous black, Ducks? Black, no, the black dude. I'm talking about with the red hair. What's his name? Trippy Red? I think so. Black as mud. But I don't think we did an event with him, did we? He, he was down there or something. We probably had a little party he was yeah, there or something. But he was down there. He was there a bunch, too. Yeah. Yes. And I walked down there just on some nosy stuff because I was tired of being right there at the last key store walking back and forth to the gas station. Right. I walked past him and came up in there and seen all the little boys and shit and just walked out. And then he told me, remember when I told you who was going on down there with the rapper? I'm like, yeah. He like, that was Adams. I'm like, whoa. I've thought about that a bunch because there was that time that Tyrell has brought up on the podcast multiple times where he basically came over the store, said what up to me, introduced himself, said that he owned the uh, Last Kings or whatever, and I'm just like, cool. He gives me his number. He, he mentioned the interview. I kind of just blow him off. And I just I think about that from his perspective as a lifelong L.A. dude, right? That And he's got a store right here on this block right. that like two blocks over – there's this white guy that where the fuck did he come from who got this super popping YouTube thing? And it's like Last Kings, yeah, they, they had social media and everything, but it, I feel like it kind of didn't blow up because of social media. It blew up because rappers were rocking it. And that right. was like the way to get shit popping at that time, like the only way. And like, yeah, that must have been kind of odd for T-Rail to just be looking at me and just thinking like, so this is the guy that you're telling me that I'm supposed to give a fuck about? That's funny. Like, yeah. All right. Small world. Small world. Yeah. Um, but okay. So how how do you know T Rell? When do you meet T Rell? Born and raised with T Rell. Oh, we okay. both grew up on Felix Lodge. Like T Rell uh stayed on forty fifty uh six. Yeah. Had his own house at nineteen years old. Terrell had his own house cashed out at nineteen years old. No he always says that, yeah. yeah. I swear to God, no cap. How do you have money for that? You gotta ask him. <laughs> you gotta ask him. But I could say he always kept a job and working that railroad track was paying money. <coughs> yeah, Terrell worked the railroad track. I said it on the end of the day too. He like, bitch, why you tell my been like, nah. He worked that railroad track and he was getting chilly from there. Mm. For sure. So he always been a hustler. Terrell always had a job or something. But as far as I know, he had a job for sure. Right. Yeah, that's one thing that I always say with T-Row is like, one day. We need to have an off-camera conversation about everything you did early in your life. I want to know about all the grimy shit that you can't say on camera. Because AD always hyping them up. Whack hyping him up. Oh, T Rail, he crazy. Yeah, I heard when he was, he was he protecting Tiger. Oh, yeah, he was protecting. No, no, I'm gonna let you know. I see. But nobody ever told me what. Like, what? What do you do? I, I believe him, but I just. I need I need details, man. Basically, shit. Tiger was blessed <laughs> to get a real nigga at that time around right. him that's really street credible in the streets and really live where he say. He but lived. then I seen the video of him harassing Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean, Frank. And I'm like, oh, it, go, it goes down. That? The YouTuber that ran up on his wife. <laughs> no, that's Gideon. Oh, okay. Frank Ocean is the motherfucker from well, he's from Odd Future originally, and he's a singer. You don't know who Frank Ocean is? That's what I'm be telling you. No, I, I bet you if you say a song, I'm going to be like, oh, that's who that is? But I don't know him. I don't I'm know gonna... a lot about Like, uh, Frank Ocean, I'm not, like, a huge fan. I don't know that much about him, but he's, like, insanely famous. He's huge. That's crazy. But, uh, yeah. But there's an old video of T-Rell harassing him in traffic and chasing him down and screaming on him. Oh, wait, wait, wait. See, now, look. I seen that when y'all talked about it and did the clips or something, yeah. I went on Worldstar and seen it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Or YouTube, I forget. That was funny. I seen that. I seen that. That's right when his arm got messed up, too. Right around that time? Right around that time. I think his arm was messed up around the time when he was chasing that dude. Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I lived with him. t row Yeah, and a mansion in Compton. That boy had a when that shit happened? With the arm? No, 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 no. This was way before that. Mm. Yeah, I lived with him. Like, he had a three-story house that go upstairs all the way up, up, up. Damn. With every hot car, car on 30s. He had that Tahoe truck on 30s. Uh, Camaro with the Yankee symbols all through it. Yeah. Did you stop hanging out with him for a while when he became, like, family man T-Rail? And then you kind of reunite doing content at some point? No, nah, we've been around each other since kids and never left a part of each other. I always give him shit that he had, he entered this chapter of his life post Tiger where it was just Sorella, family, not hanging out with the homies. He hasn't nah. done much to refute that. 
Nah, it's just that when you become a family man, your whole life is not about you no more. Oh, I feel it. I don't hang out with nobody. Yeah, it's not about I come here and I go home and I spend time with family. As bad as he want to and come out, but he's like, I got kids now, so it ain't about me. It's about them. Yeah. That's it. But, you know, that's part of the game. Yeah. Definitely. No cap. How do you feel about this content shit? I fucks with it, but it's got to be the right content. Like, you feel me? I'm going to tell you, I come in peace. I don't got a problem with nobody. I don't care where they from, what color, where I don't got a problem with nobody. I love all everybody. You feel me? So I, I really don't got no enemies or nothing, but I don't fuck with bad content. Like I'm not finna speak on you or speak on you. Or I'm not even finna comment on you because I might fuck with both of y'all. So why would I like that just be me? I just like to come in peace. I'd rather people don't even put me in it because all my content is dancing, having fun. So you're not into the beef content? I don't support it and I hate it. So like the clip that was on Pun's stream of you screaming on the chick, that's not good from your perspective? You're trying to avoid that? I was that? protecting myself. Right. I felt like I, uh, I, I was in the corner because I didn't do little row. Right. They, Pun put the video on and said, oh, look, we laughing. I'm like, yeah, look at his outfit. She told me, how your pockets look? Yeah, is see that, that I, I'm gonna realize that was weird. I'm like, is that your cousin? All you're doing is laughing at the fact that he he gained weight and he's wearing a goofy outfit, right? That was it wasn't even a weight. I was laughing at his outfit. Right. Like I don't know if she probably thought I was laughing at his weight. Thinking, That's why she, she got mad. Did she grow up with Party Next Door or something? Because I'm why is she so her, passionate about this? Her cousin. You That's what I was stuff. thinking like, too. Yeah. So I sat back and realized, like, she really trying to go in. I ain't had no choice but to defend myself. But like I said the whole time, African Queen, I come in peace. Yeah. If anybody sees me, I come in peace. So for you to still try to poke the bear, what else, what the bear gonna do? It's gonna have to fight back. You haven't followed up with her about yeah. that? Yep, right here in your in your office. Oh, how'd that go? Good, good. It was really good. She was chill. Yeah, she like, oh, I was loaded. I'm like, shit, I was loaded she too. She was loaded? Yeah, oh. like like she we was all drinking, you feel oh, me? I'm like, okay. I was loaded too, but I forgive you. I come in peace, like I said. Right. I don't mean no harm. So if that was your family member, she like, no, nah. ooh, if I thought you was talking about this about him, I said, I don't know him from a can of paint. I just was judging the outfit, and you threw a nutty, and her friend even said, like, yeah, you was tripping, girl. Like, that dude was cool that whole night. Like, he had everybody laughing. Then for her to flip the script on me, that, like, fucked me up. Like, right. did I disrespect her or something? Like, but she cool, though. You guys are falling for the, the pun yeah, I've had to the figure The punstigator. Out. Yeah, but th that's what I'm saying. They could fall for it. I fell for Shark it this got one. got too. Look, I fell for it this one everybody's, time. Everybody's just smartening look, up. Look, They're I like, damn, I'm walking into time. the lion's den here. I just know I can't comment or say nothing about it. I'm just going to get in there and bust my moves on the camera. Ha, <laughs> ha, you hear me? Talk <laughs> right. about shit, bro. They won't get me no more. Right. Yeah, I won't. You can't ask me to react on nothing because it might be their cousin up in here. They might not like my reaction. Oh, so after that party next door thing, you, you, you're going to get a lot more careful with what you talk about on camera? Please don't have that be the lesson no, you take no, from this. No, no, no. When I say that, it's like, uh, how can I put it in content? Because like, it is, it's complicated for like. But that just really woke my game up. Like, she really got mad over somebody she never probably met in her life. And yeah. I know I come in peace. So I still don't get why she got mad. That was very confusing. I look like this. Anybody that say, Oh, S F S Mac, woo woo. It's something wrong with you, cause S Mac don't bother nobody. I don't walk around like I'm some big bad tough Billy. I come in peace. Mm. You feel me? I just want everybody to be happy. That's it. We gonna turn up, have a good time, smoke us some weed, have some drinks. I'm gonna have you laughing all day. So right. how could you be mad at me? I'm not disrespecting nobody. So that that just fucked me up. But I learned in this YouTube game. You feel me? You can't beat the comments and. Anything might happen at the time. You just got to know how to ah, control the scene. But it is, it's, there's an additional layer of weirdness talking about shit online for guys like you and T-Rail and AD, right, who are really from somewhere, where it's like, you're a YouTuber, you want to just react honestly to shit, but there's a lot of shit that you could say that might get you in trouble or makes shit complicated All for you. All I can you. do is just get my opinion on it, but it's certain stuff I won't get my opinion I tell a person I ain't got no comment on that because it's not my business, but... If I could break something down and, and tell you, like, oh, okay, well, but yeah, but as far as, like, nah, hell no, nah. I look at it, I'm giving the youngsters game. Mm. You feel me? I'm giving them a cold story, so hopefully you ain't got to go through what I go through. You could choose something better and do something better. You feel me? My story ain't no, oh, go do this, go do that. My story is, nigga, learn from me. I've been there, done that. It ain't worth it. Mm. Go this way. Go that route. What you do? You play basketball? Go play ball then. Nigga, what you right here for? What you do? You play soccer? Go play soccer. What you right here for? Like, I motivate the youth. Like, that's it. I motivate them, for sure. 
Mm. So what are you focused on in your life at this point? Right now in my life, I'm really just focused on family and really trying to blow up with this YouTube shit because I fell in love with it. I'm not going to lie. Like, mm. I could sit on the camera for four, five hours when it's on live, talk shit, swallow spit, you feel me? I could do an interview, <laughs> and, and the dude that's interviewing, we just going to be chopping real game. We going to forgot we on cameras, like, you feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm fucking with this, so I got the hype man stuff locked in. Now, this is where I want to be. Right. Damn. And I feel like I fit it. Like, yeah, I'm definitely. undeniable. The people fuck with you. For sure. They love you. I was looking at the first time I came on your show, it already had hit like down there 100 and some K. I go back to rappers and I ain't going to speak on their name. Like I said, I come in peace. They've been there a week, two weeks, three weeks. They numbers, they never compared to mine. I said, oh, I see something. <laughs> like you know what I mean? like yeah. that shit because I go off numbers. I'm a number dude. I think a lot of rappers have that moment where they realize that they can make a vlog or like a video talking about some shit and it would get more views than they would get from a music video that might cost them five or ten grand to make. Hmm. That's a moment for a lot of rappers where they're like, for sure. Oh, all right, for sure. Hmm. Facts, no cap. I don't for know sure. though. Can all the rappers be YouTubers, or do you feel like you no? Because it's like this. Do you Everybody forfeit? Not- cut for that camera mm-hmm. to just be on them they got to come up with uh legendary lies and whatever to keep it going but when it's natural like me you is natural we just kool aid in right you feel me lobster taking trip is natural but if you want to be taken serious as a rapper you need an element of mystery and you have to build up a lot of uh desire to hear what you have to say that's why i think when somebody like kendrick drops an album that's really like why people are showing up in droves to hear him is because he he has that mystery element to him. You barely ever get to hear what the fuck he's up to. Right. And then when he does pop out, <laughs> it really makes an impression on you. And uh, I think that that's just like extremely important to who he is. And when he dropped, like he talking about real life stuff where everybody like, damn, like I can relate to that. Right. Sure, I can relate to that, so... That dude is like a shining star. It's, the sky is the limit for him. Do you think he could be? Do you think Kendrick would be big if he was a, if he was a vlogger, if he was just putting out videos of him hanging out around the house with the kids and yeah, the wife? Yeah, because his personality is just like us, like me, Q. Like when we in the lab, I don't look at him as Kendrick. Q is not Q. Them is regular, and we just have fun. Like we going up. Like ah. you think Beyonce would be Beyonce if she was just on her Instagram story, like, hey, how y'all doing? I think I, you I, become Beyonce when you deprive like you make them love you and then you deprive them of yourself so much that every time they get a little bit of you they go crazy they just have to go all over it right that's true i don't know it's the but scarcity you know, different game strokes for different folks because a, a lot of rappers do the opposite a lot of rappers they get some element of fame whatever you could sell a feature for five grand or doing five million fucking features for five grand, you get your name blown out real quick. People don't really want to hear from you at a certain point because there's no scarcity built up. You know, I, I look at this game right here is so crazy. I ain't gonna lie, Adams, because back in the day, <coughs> it was a lot of stuff going on. But this era right now, I don't blame no rapper, no singer if you never see him in the world because mm. look what's going on. I don't blame you. Okay, I'm dropping music from the house, nigga. I ain't coming outside like. For what? Look, look what's going on. Look what just happened to the takeoff. Rest in peace to him. Like, yeah, look what man. happened to BNB. Look what happened to what's the name? Uh, 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 out of town, Dolph. Like, mm-hmm. think about it. The list goes on. Like, I, ain't, I don't got to say it. The list goes on. Like, bro, I'm scared to come outside. Like, bro, this what's going on. Mm. Like, bro, back in the days, and they just gonna fight you, take your jewelry, and get on. These niggas taking your life. So, it sucks, homie. So what, you you think the rappers are wise to just really stay away from all the shit? Because sometimes I think that's what I need to be doing in my life. I need to be going to all these pop-ups and events and clubs. But, and but No, because it, it ain't what you do, it's how you do. The energy you put in is the energy you get out. Yeah. You feel me? So just do it smarter, take security, be sharp. You don't think you're going to go with your homies and, and they got your back. No, no, no. They got your back. But when them shots ring out, who got your back, nigga? Cause I, everybody running, everybody. Ain't nobody trying to get shot. Yeah. The people that's doing what they doing, they doing them. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody else is running. Right. Bullets ain't got no name on it. So, and I, I don't go places where I think it's gonna be dangerous or none of that. So, you don't put yourself in that. You know. 
So you don't go back to the neighborhood or anything? Yeah. You do? Yeah, but I know how to move. You feel mm-hmm. me? You know, just standing out, posted on the corner. No, when I go in, I'm huh, backyard, boop, go through the back doors. You feel me? Anywhere I go, I'm going in through the back door. Any house I pull up. The back door? Yeah. We got driveways that go all the way. Oh, so like the yeah, back dude, alley? No, nah, it's not an alley. It's a backyard. When you turn into the yard, go all the way back. You between a house and a mm-hmm. house now. You open that gate up, go back there, close that gate, and walk on to the porch. And what do you got to do back there? Nothing. I got dogs and shit back there when I'm back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing with the pit bulls. <laughs> you scared of pit bulls? No, I've been loving them since a kid. I've okay. been having them since a kid. A lot of people think they should be outlawed. Yeah, but it, like I said, what you put in the game is what you get out of it. If you raise your dog to be on that type of level, my dog is all family dogs, so you feel me? You don't raise it to be a beast? Nah, if I do that, I'd rather go pay that chili and uh, get it done the professional way, where it'd be like Q did his dog. He's, he'll, uh, stranger, you say stranger, and you not by Q, hey, you getting your ass bit up. When they hear stranger, oh, his dog do a lap around the mansion, Come back, look at you, take off again right. until he say another word. I can't think of the word, but then he say the other word, and then the dog like this right here in front of his face. I'm going to do it the legit way, but nah, I never raised him to be mean. So what, what's your advice to a young kid in this day and age who's coming up in Los Angeles, wants to make something out of themselves, but they you know, are in the same place that you're in where it's like you're kind of in danger and there's a lot of temptation for you to join whatever. I mean, like, how do you? How would you instruct that kid if you knew him these days? You want him to stay him, safe and you want him to protect themselves. Right. I'm going to just tell him like this, man. You feel me? Do what you do. Whatever you do and you believe in that, you play football, basketball, just take it serious and it's going to get you out of there. Mm-hmm. There's going to be ups and downs like a roller coaster in life no matter what, whether you're famous, rich. It's ups and downs. You feel me? What I mean by that is everybody got problems. Mm. You feel me? It's just that we got them a little harder because we subject don't make it to see 15, 14. Mm. Just find a sport or rap or drawing, whatever, and just keep your mind on that and stay away from all the negativity, man. Right. You feel me? But do you think that, do you classify all gang shit under negativity when you think about how you would talk about it to a young kid? Yeah, I don't want you to gang bang. That's negative in the motherfucker. Yeah. You, know, you either going to be dead or in jail doing life. You hear me? It's over with. Cancel Christmas. Right. Ain't nothing good in it. But you still love it? No, I don't love it. I love where I'm from. Right. I love my community. But as far as like, oh, no, because if I knew what I knew now, I wouldn't have did this. Mm. But we can't do a change of life and turn around. Which which, Maybe you made your bed. That's how you got to lay in it. So I laid in my bed already. Right. And I don't regret nothing I did either. And Like I just was telling my cousin, I said, when I die, they say we're supposed to come back. But especially when you're talking about an L.A. rapper, the pressure to affiliate yourself is immense. Think about it, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right. I'm just, man, just find something positive other than game. Yeah. Bottom line. Don't look at that. that that's, yeah, that's, nah, nah, nah. Hell nah. Because look at the assumption in what I even just said is that you can't be a rapper in L.A. and not be affiliated with a gang. But the reality is is that you could. N- nobody, you. N- nobody gives a fuck about Tyler, the creator, being one of the biggest rappers in the world from the L.A. area Nobody because he don't put out violent or negative you. energy. And that's my you know? boy. That's my boy. Right. Oh, he, he fuck with Q like this. He good people. Right. Tyler, the creator. I done been in shows. Thank you. Be you. That's mm. why me. All I know is to be me. That's why everybody love me. We love your vibe. We love your energy. I know how to be me. I can't fake it. If you come from a, some other city, don't come out here and join a gang. Because now your whole credibility is like me as an L.A. dude looking at you like, <laughs> yeah, they finna milk you for everything. You you one of those. You feel me? Come out here and be you. Hey, man, I'm from Wooty Woo Woo. Don't get involved in that gang. Yo. That's shame on you, whatever the fuck happened. Mm. This ain't nothing you want to play with. They come out here and play with. This ain't nothing you want to play with at all. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a living testimony, nine shots. It's nothing you want to play with. Mm. If I knew what I knew now, I'd really be better living. <laughs> For real. <laughs> For real. You got a girl? Yeah. For how long? Six years. Six years, okay. Same. Mm-hmm. So you locked in? Yeah, like a mug. You got kids? No. You planning on it? Uh, when the time is right, I always I, I was raised like so. Like I was telling you, my daddy never 
took care of me. So I want to do the best, and I want my kid to have the best. I don't want to have to struggle and be like, I got to figure it out. When that kid come in the world, it got a million diapers, a million this, it's on <laughs> room. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to be one of those because I know that feeling, how my mama had to struggle and make ends meet to feed five kids. Mm. So now nah, I want to be right for sure. At least a house, two cars. She got one. I got one. We living good. We ain't got to worry about nothing. I know we set for life. We got money coming in for life. Now let's do something. But until then, it's when God wants it to happen. I mean, you could pump a baby out at 50. That part. It's just the girl you got to worry about. I ain't worried about it. I'm going to be blessed with whatever. Boy, girl, I want to have twins so I can not kill two birds in one stone. Boop. It is very birds. efficient, yeah. Raise two of them at the same time. But then time. at the same time, bro, like, I haven't had one kid. Oh, man, I cannot imagine having to raise two of them at the same time. Holy shit. You killing two birds at once? Yeah, but then you just cram so much baby making into a short period of time. That's when it's that's very when I, efficient. That's, that's when I'll come, okay, you're going to keep that one because she like you more than she like me, and he like me more, and we're going to hide. We're going to work it out. Because I'm going to be real. Having a kid is kind of like a job. Like for sure. and and having twins, like the pregnancy part, it's like you have two jobs at the exact same time. I feel sorry for her. Got to push them out. Is that C-section or regular? <sighs> Either way. God damn. Yeah. But yeah, I want some kids though. <laughs> for sure. Eventually though, I just want to make sure I'm stable and right. That's it. For sure. All right. What else we need to know? Whatever you want to know. Uh, shit, back on Fig on Friday, you heard mm. me? I got the podcast going with Terrell. That's going lovely. That's doing numbers. Right. Shout out Terrell. That's doing numbers. Up in the crib. Doing numbers. Heather and in the corner. What? Oh, y'all love her heart. I've been knowing her <laughs> since she met him. You feel me? Like, that's right. sis. Hey, they loving it. They should have had you in the Simpsons thing. Nah. Nah, they ain't finna. Well, who I'm going to be? Lenny. No, no. <laughs> Just like one of Homer's friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be the dude at the bar, huh? Serving the yeah, drinks. Huh? No, nah, I went Lenny because you're skinny, but uh, yeah, you could be Barney for sure. <laughs> Let me lit. Just drunk as fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. Chief Wiggum? For sure. Yeah? I, well, nah, if you dressed up like Chief Wiggum, nah. oh, man. You think it'd go? I mean, could you, could you even rock a, a fake cop costume, or is that kind of against your religion? No, I could rock it if I'm doing a movie or something, getting some chili off of it. But right. as far as just dressing up on a Halloween, being a cop, nah, that never was in my dream. Could you wear a dress for a movie? Nah. You couldn't be in White Chicks? Yeah, for the right chili. Like, because I know who I am and I'm comfortable in my skin. So right. I don't care about what anybody got to say. For the right chili, put me in a movie with Denzel, it's going to go crazy or something. I'm, yeah, like, come on, bro. Like, that's the people that <laughs> say they don't do it. They not happy with themselves. I know who I am. Right. And if I, if I'm funny, I'm funny, and I could do it and pull this off. Like I know I'm not that. This is a movie. You tell, it, they it, take movies too seriously. It's different. They take movies too seriously, man. It's different to cross dress if you are an actor. They take these movies too seriously. Right. That's just the bottom line. Like, okay, here's he's playing a part. You here's mad? the hypothetical. What if I get offered a, a, a movie role, mm -hmm. and in the movie I have to say the n word? I'm a racist in the movie. It's a movie. Yeah. They caught up in the character. It's a movie. That's not him in real life. That's a movie. What about, uh, it's, look at all the other movies they made. People didn't say it. They ain't over there bashing them. Yeah. Like, come on, it's a movie. That's a character. Yeah. I think that the concern for a lot of people would be like that it would, they would then have to see it a lot out of context. Look at Jingo. Come on. What was what's name playing? The house, like, come on, bro. Like, it's a movie. But, okay, there's a lot of things. Like, I think you would have a hard time if they were making a movie and there's a child molester in the movie. I think you would have a really hard time getting a lot you of... You know why I won't? A, a because lot I of, know that in that movie, he ain't really touched that child. Ain't none of that's going on. Like, that's a right. movie. But a lot of male actors, I don't think, would take that role uh, they because they the, know that people, people in their head are going to have a hard time. Uh, yes, you but know? think about it, though. It's, it's crazy because I can get deep into that shit. I mean, I swear <laughs> to God, like... It's a movie at the end of the day. Yeah. Even though you're gonna have people that's like, oh no, I don't, I don't condone to that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. look at all the movies. Y'all still go watch them though. Right. You still right there watching them though. Like, come on, it's a movie. That's a character, man. They get caught up in the character, man. Like, that's out. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a movie. You think that man that's playing that character did that? No, he's reacting somebody that like. But well, maybe he did. 
Well, he's going to have to figure that out with God. Because if it hit the streets, then they're going to do they're what gonna they They're going to make do. a separate documentary about him. That, that's shame on him, then. He deserves everything got coming if he's really in real life doing that. Because do you remember the show Seventh Heaven? Seven. It was just a lame ass white show about like a family who like owned a church or like the dad's like a pastor at the church, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember always seeing the movie or seeing the show. Like my my girlfriend at the time, her parents would watch it. I would just kind of see it, whatever. And then I remember seeing another movie, like a Lifetime movie, and he's a fucking child molester in the movie. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. This shit is weird as fuck. Like just seeing this dude play this character, and then years later, it comes out. That exact shit came out about him. About him. That he really was that. Hey, that takes a lot of balls to play a fucking child molester in a movie and then get revealed that, that you, you actually really were down yeah, the road. Like, wow. <laughs> but Dang. I don't know. I might be fucking the story up. I can't remember if what they actually caught him for. Right. So Damn, if, that's deep. If I fucked it up, shout out to him. Yeah, shout out to you. But if I didn't fuck it up, then Give you're a weirdo. Respect, then. He's probably in prison. Res- <laughs> put some respect on no jumper then. That's all we're asking. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, w- what else we got to look forward to from Smack? And how do you get the name Smack? You smack somebody? Nah, that that came from... And some people call it, say, S-Mac. S-Mac, but it's, you can say S-Mac, Smack, you feel me? Short for Smack, you feel me? But that came from when I left Flirts and joined the gang, I wanted to turn that gang name into something good and positive instead of when they hear S-Mac, Big S-Mac, Little S-Mac, Baby S-Mac, rest in peace, and Tiny, and you feel me? Now when y'all hear it, y'all going to think positive of that name. Like, I just changed the whole narrative about it. You feel me? Because that name right there is something I stuck with. I, I was in the game with that name, S-Mac the Boss. You feel me? That's what my Instagram is. But, yeah, so I just wanted to flip it around like, Instead of people hearing, oh, watch out, ooh, no, no, nah. it's a S-Mac, that's a real good one over there, you feel me, he come mm. in peace. That's what I really did it for, so I just kept it in, shout out my big on me, S-Mac, I love him to death. I just kept the name, I want to flip it. Instead of y'all thinking of it as negativity in the ghetto, now they know it's positive now. So this was just your big homie and you just kind of ro- rolled with his name? Yeah, because I'm tiny S-Mac, you feel me? You think so- I should be like baby A-D? I <laughs> know nope. you just be you like you been doing. Or maybe I should make he him be baby Adam twenty two. Yeah, now that's what you do. Get a mm. little homie. You know, yeah, that's what you supposed to do right think, there. I no. don't think AD is ready to be a little homie at no, this point in his no, life. No, not AD. I'm saying you just get a little homie. Yeah, you don't be a, a, a baby Adams. You feel me? Because you feel yeah, yeah, baby Adams. But bro. I got to get him like dressed up and looking exactly like me. That way, like that's like him being baby Adam. But man, he's gonna get. He's gonna outgrow that by the time he's sixteen. He's gonna be like, "What the fuck?" Like, it all depends. <laughs> you, yeah. you you getting chilly, so he might follow the lead. Yeah, and and, and make somebody himself. Now he. Yeah. I just feel like in in the real world, everybody wants to be their own man at a certain point, Fact. and at some point, it's different to be baby somebody when that somebody is not known on like a big level. That's like, like me. It, it'd be weird to be baby tiger. But that's like me. I'm tiny smack. Like you think I'll be going around saying, Oh yeah, I'm tiny smack. Like, nah, yeah. cause but even though I respect the big on me, but nah, I'm S Smack. So to the people, they like that's smack. They be on Instagram, big smack. Ooh, I, I just feel good. Like cause I ain't under nobody and then I'm my own man. I just flipped the name and got it on some positive stuff. Let's go. What are you gonna eat for dinner tonight? Oh, that's a good thing. I don't know. She probably cooks some. She, if, you uh, never know. Home cooking. Yeah, for sure. Got to respect that. Mm-hmm. I got a salad out there. A salad? Should I eat McDonald's on the way here around the corner over there? What'd you get? Double cheeseburger, small fries, and a Dr. Pepper. Mm, that sounds good. Yeah. With no onions, though. Nah. I don't like onions. I know pickles is my thing. I don't have pickles in either. Oh, no onions and no pickles? No onions, no pickle, and no tomato. Everybody, if you ever have to serve this man a burger, there's yeah. the cheat code. You don't even have to ask him. Yeah, just meat and cheese, no onions, no tomatoes, no pickles, and I'm good. Put that bacon on there. Put everything else y'all think I like on there, but just leave that out. Hey, right, this, this interview is going to come out, and then about a week later, you're going to hit McDonald's, and you're going to order that exact thing, and if they don't know your order already, you can say, bitch, <laughs> you watch this. this. You ain't seen this? Now get my order right. You didn't watch the entire thing? I did watch it. Well, you didn't, you see didn't memorize part? it? That part. Hold up. Hold up. All right. 
appreciate you. Man, I appreciate you. I want to give you your flowers. Thank you. You deserve it, man. You looked out for a lot of people, gave people jobs, gave them an outlet to let the record reflect. Man, let me give you your flowers. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. It is an honor getting to tell your story. Thank you, bro. On the real. Thank oh, man. You. Smack. My boy. Ah, you're not- no Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. And hit the notification bell, too, so you'll know when we on. Yeah.